Hi, my name is Munjan Albaderis. I'm an orthopedic surgeon from Sydney, Australia. I'll be demonstrating a total hip replacement procedure utilizing the anterior approach on a male patient with most likely neck preserving system and hard and hard bearing of ceramic. The perioperative planning include utilizing standard radiographs, AP pelvis and lateral of the concerned hip. We start by templating. Ideally, I would template on the opposite side. However, this patient had a total hip replacement on the other side. We know that size from the other hip replacement which could well be matching the size that we were planning to put on this hip. Planning for neck preserving stem is different to planning for standard implant. You need three point loading. The first is around the medial calca, the second is around lateral edge of the neck and the third is around the lateral border of the shaft. We impose the planning sheets and it seems that the stem would be sitting at this point. This technique will require three point loading rather than a press fit implant into the shaft. This is metaphysial loading implant. The center of the head, according to this measure, will be a bit higher than the current center of the head, is around this point. After we plan for the stem, we take the planning for the estabular cup, and the cup would be sitting just lateral to the point that we measured. And this seems to be a good position for cup where it at the floor of the establum, just lateral to the teardrop and the inclination will be around 45 degrees. To perform this operation, the patient can be positioned on a standard table in a supine position. Both legs are positioned straight and the pelvis need to be at the area where the leg can be flexed at this point. The landmarks are the anterior superior iliac spine, the iliac crest, the greater trochanter, the patella, a vertical line transecting anterior superior iliac spine with the patella. If we choose to do longitudinal incision, it will be two centimeters lateral to the anterior superior iliac spine and one centimeter inferior pointing vertically. The incision can be around 10 centimeter in length. The patient is positioned supine and this is a special type of drape that allow both legs to be prepped. However, you can use single extremity drape without a problem. This is the anterior superior iliac spine and that's the greater trochanter. The incision is made, vertical incision, two centimeters lateral to the anterior superior iliac spine and one centimeter distal. The size of the incision is around 10 centimeters. I incise the skin and the subcutaneous tissue, undermining the subcutaneous tissue down to the fascia to give space for the special type of retractor called the Alexis retractor, which holds the tissue apart and protect the skin from being contaminating the wound. Positioning the retractor is very simple. You fold it inward. However, you don't have to use this retractor if you don't have access to it. Superficial collies fascia and the interval between the tensor fascia lata and the sartorius muscle is around here. I make an incision lateral to that to avoid damaging the lateral tenuous nerve of the thigh. Using finger dissection, I identify the interval between the tensor fascia lata and the sartorius muscle. The layer is as you can see. I insert a curved Holman retractor just lateral to the femoral neck. This will open the space to identify the area where the rectus muscle is located. You can see the rectus fascia just in the view. I retract medially using a Langenbeck retractor, the tissue to identify the rectus muscle. This is the rectus muscle covered by the rectus fascia. The next step is to identify the ascending branch of the lateral femoral circumflex vessel. Lie in the interval down here. We gently dissect the lateral femoral circumflex vessels and they are just lying there. You have the option of ligating these vessels or cauterizing them. I choose cautery for these vessels. Using a Bristol retractor, you can reflect the rectus muscle of the iliofemoral ligament. This is the iliofemoral ligament. The next step is to open the joint. I use Bartholomew to incise the iliofemoral ligament obliquely at the neck up to the estabular edge. Once you open the joint capsule, you can identify where the femoral neck is and it's just down there. I then use a curved Holman retractor around the femoral neck medially. This step needs to be done with extreme care, not to injure the neurovascular structure. You don't have to go all the way at the beginning as long as you can 
the request, the tissue, and then gradually you can identify the plane. I prefer to do capsulectomy rather than capsulotomy. I believe that the capsules and the tissue around this area covering the femoral neck and head are part of the disease and they are all scarred. There is no benefit, in my opinion, from preserving the capsule. It does not add any stability to the hip. As a matter of fact, I strongly believe that imbalanced capsule can be contributor in instability of the hip joint. I remove the anterior part of the capsule and you can see the head of the femur is on view. I then readjust my retractor by putting a Hohmann retractor medially on the femoral neck. This will open up the space dramatically. Proceed to identify the edge of the establum securely. Care needs to be taken not to go too superficial because the femoral nerve is very close, sitting anterior to the rectus muscle. I then put an anterior Hohmann retractor and this retractor will be reflecting the femoral head laterally and almost dislocating the femoral head. You can see the femoral head clearly on view at the moment. One more step is very important before we dislocate the femoral head. I do perform in situ dislocation before I cut the neck. The step is involving releasing the inferior medial part of the capsule as this would be holding the hip in position and preventing it from dislocating. We are ready to dislocate the head. I use a corkscrew inserting into the femoral head. The corkscrew is skewed in the head and the direction of pull will be vertical and out. Dislocating the head is simple. I then reposition my retractors again. I put one curved retractor medial to the neck, one curved retractor lateral to the neck, and you may need a superior retractor or may not. In this case, I don't need it. Throughout the whole process, I used maximum three curved Hohmann retractors. There are very minimal number of instruments that are required to perform the surgery. We proceed to perform the preliminary cut of the femoral neck. This cut is subcapital. Care need to be taken when the saw is exiting. I remove the femoral head. As you can see, the cut is subcapital. This patient has severe arthritis with ebonated bone. So far, you can see clearly that the muscle of the tensor fasciolata is well preserved. Care need to be taken to protect this muscle. I proceed to positioning the retractors to address their stablum. The first retractor is inserted medial and inferior on the establum just below the transverse establar ligament. Care need to be taken not to injure the operator vessels at this stage. This retractor will pull the tissue inferiorly and open the medial side of the establum. The second retractor need to be positioned lateral on the establum at the posterior aspect. You can see by positioning the retractors, we open the femoral neck to view. By positioning these retractors, you can see most of the establum is on view and the femoral neck is on view as well. I proceed at this stage to perform my definite femoral neck cut by using the saw. We are planning to perform a neck preserving stem, so I try to preserve the neck laterally, 2 mm lateral border, and medially I go mid cervical. This amount of resection is sufficient to provide excellent view and proceed to put my third retractor inferiorly and posteriorly in the establum. This will complete the visualization of the entire establum. I proceed to resect the inferior capsule, the superior part of the labrum to avoid any soft tissue impingement while weaning. The next step to identify the floor of the establishment. You can see there is a big osteophyte at the floor. This is the floor of the establishment, and that's where we aim with our depth of reaming. Then we move to reaming the establishment. I start with small reamer to identify the floor and then I enlarge gradually. The first reaming process I aim to push medially. The pressure is applied at around 30 degrees perpendicular to the floor and around 60 degrees inclination. I feel that I achieve reaching the floor of the establishment. You can see there is a lot of cartilage and subchondral bone in the rena. We go gradually. Considering the size of the cut, the rena may need to be removed in situ. 
this is 52 Rima and I think I got most of the subcontrol bone. Finally, I use a 54 Rima. You can see the Rima is very stable in the cup. I use it as my template. I'm satisfied with this size. I use a hemispherical cementless cup with plasma spray and HA protein. This is a standard generic cup. I use a ceramic liner. I go with the cup upside down to get into the floor. Once I bottom in, I then rotate the cup into the position that is desirable for impaction. My aim is to have it around 20 degrees of antiversion and 45 degrees of inclination. We impact the cup in place and checking the stability it looks very stable. I then check my cup position and look for osteophytes. It's better to be done by feel. I can feel some osteophytes anteriorly, medially and inferior medial. To insert the liner. The liner has to sit perfectly in place in order to be impacted. I then proceed to remove the osteophyte and you can see I position one of my retractors just anterior to them and you can see it's very large. I use an osteotone. I use that for me to complete recessing the osteophyte. You can see the size of this osteophyte is significantly large. Small inferior osteophyte that I can resect with a bone nibbler. I'm satisfied that the position of the cup is perfect and then there are no osteophytes around the cup to cause any impingement for the hip replacement. We have completed the stabilizer side of this operation. We move on to the femoral component. Now that we have completed the stabilizer component, you can see the tissue, all of it, is well preserved. This is the tensor fascia lata and there is no damage to the muscle whatsoever. The sartorius is under this fascia, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve of the thigh is just down there and the rectus muscle is just down here very well preserved we continue to the femoral component of the hip replacement i tend to internally rotate the femur to identify the greater trochanter i insert a curved common retractor just superior to the greater trochanter then that will deliver the femoral shaft anteriorly i insert double prone retractor medial to the calca and that will deliver the femoral neck laterally I externally rotate the femur and that will position the femoral neck superior inferiorly. I adduct the femoral shaft and that will deliver the femur further outward. Once you position the retractors in the right place, you can see the femoral neck is on view. That's all we need to perform the femoral component of this operation. I start by using a curved rasp to identify the canal. The canal is identified with the rasp very simply. I widen the canal gently for the brooch to be inserted. The rasp is used as a pathfinder for the canal. The position is superiorly and laterally, facing the lateral border of the patella. This way you avoid perforating the femur. We proceed with the broaching. The brooch needs to be parallel to the femoral neck. This is impaction broaching, so you don't rust. You can hear the volume and the tone of the impaction changing, and that tells you that we are nearly finished. This is the final broach, number six. I can hear the broach bottoming. We move on to the trial. I reposition the neck, figure of four, to insert the trial neck and trial head. We remove the retractors. Reducing the hip should be very simple by a simple thumb push. And you can feel the clump. The leg length, the alignment of the foot and the x-ray. The cup positioning is perfect, just lateral to the teardrop, very well impacted and the inclination and the antiversion is good. The trial femoral stem is in good place, exactly where I want it to be for the definite position. We move on to put the definite implant. To dislocate the hip trial, I use a bone hook. I insert the bone hook just around the neck and gently I apply traction. I external rotate the hip that will deliver the femoral head and the neck. I reposition the lateral hormone retractor 
around the GT and the double prone. We take our brooch off. I do final broaching because we allowed the bone to stretch fully and we insert the definite implant. The implant is neck preserving implant. It's short with HA coating and plasma spraying. I use a simple pencil impactor to position the implant into final position. We use the ceramic head. Gentle maneuvering will allow us to insert the head and we do gentle impaction of the thermal head. I remove the retractors and perform a final reduction of the hip. This may need some assistance. Nice clunk of the hip joint being reduced. After reduction, I check the leg position. The leg seems to be positioned in the right plane. The leg length is equal. I can feel both mandibular at the same level and the heel at the same level. We preserve all the soft tissue and there is no damage to any muscles. We can see the hip joint well positioned. There is no impingement of the hip, cup or neck. This is very good position of the hip joint. After washing of the debris to reduce the chance of heterotropic bone ossification, we close the wound very simply by closing the facial layer like that. The final size of the wound is around 8 to 10 centimeters. This procedure is not about the size of the wound, but about the requirement of performing adequate exposure with perfect alignment of the hip joint without compromising the soft tissue and the view. Thank you very much.